Welcome to another edition of Mixed Combat Radio. I know it's not you know, a miracle. It's not the work of Jesus Christ. Two shows in two days, back to back. I know this is rare. This is rare for MCR because, you know, TBV takes over my life and Mr. Doomy Doomsday's life. And before we get to everyone on the panel, before we get to this interesting card, to say the least, uh, shout out to everyone that tuned in yesterday's episode. We did some good numbers. Just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, we had some UFC fighters tuned in. We had uh, some boxing champions tune in and former champions tune in, actually. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in and all the fighters out there that are tuning in. Uh, just want to say shout out to every single one of you. And it was a, it was a good weekend. Good weekend. Uh, this And this past week, it was a good week. But now we actually get some fights. It was boring. We didn't have TBV. Now we're here. We have Adonis Stevenson, Fonfaro tomorrow, and UFC 212. Which is what this show's about. Jose Aldo versus Max, my boy, the blessed one, Holloway. Uh, I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this fight. I, uh, anybody that is a striker or a fan of striking and loves MMA, this fight is, is perfect for it. I, I, I can't wait to uh, to chop it up with everyone. Uh, now going to Mr. Diamond Gloves champion himself, Mr. Bringer of Dooms. Uh <laughs> The bringer of doom. Yes. Are you not entertained? Hold on. Before we get to him, because I have I have one last thing to say. Yes, yeah, some machine guns to Mr. Doomsday for going out for a drink with his girlfriend and said be on the show yesterday. You know, it, it would have been a whole like almost TBV special with me, casual, and doomsday on. But nah, nah, he was too busy, I guess. Hey, man, for all the ladies out there, you know that the wifey needs her attention. I had to be with the wifey. So, you know what I'm saying? If the guys don't back me up, I know the women will. <laughs> That's true. That is very, very true. So, uh, obviously, we have Doomsday on. And, and resident trainer of the year, Santiago himself. Santiago, how you doing? I'm doing good, dude. Just here, ready to talk about tomorrow's uh, UFC card, among other things. Definitely excited to see some of the renowned strikers that are going to appear on tomorrow's card. Yeah, before we actually dig into and break down and give our predictions for this card, because there are a ton of actually good fights on this. I know this card has received a lot of criticism uh, for the depth of it and such. And that's actually what I really want to get into is what what is with the criticism with this card? Before we break down all these fights individually and actually break down the technique, what's going to happen in the cage, there's obviously some outside hype or lack of hype for this card. Uh, Jose Aldo's sort of return after beating Frankie Edgar, Max Holloway, you know, 10 fight winning streak in the division. I think these are very interesting factors. And obviously, as the title suggests, is Conor McGregor just overshadowing this fight? Is his 13 second knockout over Aldo more important than the 10 year decade plus reign of Aldo proving he's the greatest featherweight of all time in MMA history? Um, why is there this negativity or lack of caring or this indifference to this card doomy doomsday i know you're a fan of aldo i'm a fan of aldo and max holloway is awesome this fight's amazing with conor mcgregor not being in the division this is absolutely for the best featherweight in the world right now this fight so why yeah. is it getting why is it not getting the attention it deserves well you know i'm kind of surprised to hear that uh matt you know what i mean because uh this is something for the hardcores we, we've been waiting for this matchup uh for a long time we we fantasize about this max holloway jose aldo uh, fight. Uh, we know people have been wanting to see him fight Conor McGregor too, but uh, like you said, Jose Aldo's—he's the greatest man. He's—he's—he's—he's he's, he's, he's beat a lot of people in his time and his reign. He just—you know—he fell short with a uh, a very special fighter in Conor McGregor. But shit, man, I'm rooting for Max Holloway on this. I'm gonna shoot it off right from the rip right there. You know, I've always been a big fan of Max Holloway and Jose Aldo. But uh, this is sort of into his own too. He's becoming somebody like he somebody. is. He's he's. I, does you know what this is reminding me of? Sort of like the uh, AJ and Klitschko uh, thing. You know what I mean? New new lion going Obviously against the old lion. The AJ, but that similar dynamic. I'll be, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the dynamics, not the fame. But and even and even so, you can't even knock it because Jose Aldo is famous, and he what? he was at the top of his uh, uh, division for a while before he got knocked off. Well, the thing with you're comparing Aldo with Klitschko, obviously, and I think that's actually a very con good comparison. Both reigned for about a decade plus. Both were the best of their generation. Obviously, boxing has a greater heavyweight history, so you can't say Klitschko was the best heavyweight of all time. But we can say without doubt Aldo is the best featherweight of all time. 
that is without question. I think everyone in the MMA sphere believes that. Um, but with Klitschko, he is so close to retirement, I would say. I say most of us in the boxing community say that Klitschko is maybe a fight, maybe two fights away from calling it up. How about you? What do you think about Jose? You don't think the same applies to him? Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Do you think it applies to him? Do you? Think I, I, re I really do think. I really do. I really do think so. Let me tell you something. Wow. He, he's been fighting for just like Fedor Emelianenko, fighting for ten plus years. He stood at the top of his division. You know what I mean? He was the monster. But then, you know, oh, no, age. Yeah. Can, hey, listen, age catches up with you. That body can't take enough beatings, bro. I don't care how how much you do, you know, the try, but it takes a toll on your body. So good against Frankie Yeager. And look what Frankie Yeager just did, did to Yair Rodriguez. Hey, I you mean, know what? You know what? You're right. Because you know what? At the end of the day, who am I to tell a guy you can't fight anymore? You know what I mean? You want to keep fighting? Do Go ahead and do it. But as a, somebody that likes to, you know, that's seen the sport for so long, I, I say that, you know, he's done a lot for the sport, man. I mean, but at the end of the day, as a fighter, too, you can't like pass him on. He's definitely past his prime. I think we all know that. I think the question is, how much does he have left in the tank? Well, what do you think? I think he has something left in the tank. I think he... I mean, the the, the fight against Frank Yeager showed to me that he is still there, that he is still the number two featherweight at that time because obviously Conor McGregor still had the belt at that point. But now with Conor McGregor out of the division, he is obviously the best featherweight in the world. He is. Now, do I think Max Holloway is going to beat him? Obviously, we're going to get into our predictions later. Um, that's another question for for later in the show. But if Aldo wins, I do sort of agree with the idea that he only wants maybe one or two fights, and that is McGregor. I think Aldo is not interested in anyone else but McGregor. You think he uh, wants to have revenge? You think he's willing to put it on the line again with that guy? I mean, think about Aldo being pound for pound top five in the world probably still to this day. Um, and at the time, he was top three, at least. And then you put in perspective his overall great reign and how it stacks up with other great reigns in MMA history. He's up there with one of the best MMA fighters of all time. A am I wrong? I mean, is not no, no. Aldo one of the best fighters we've ever seen in MMA history? Like I said, he. I mean, I've been following Aldo all the way back to w uh, WC. Yeah, exactly. Um, Legend. WC. So it's it's I've seen him come up. He you saw the prime. I saw the prime. So. I saw the prime, bro. This guy's earned his spot. He's one of those fighters that um I can totally say he's earned his spot. He hasn't had easy fights or or you know, sort of like that, you know, guiding your career along easy path sort of thing. He's had his f share of wars and um I mean he's demolished most of his competition, especially in his prime, as you remember. Uh I just again I think that you know. Looking at it, and I know his manager too. Uh, he's been with his manager for a long time. I'm pretty sure they talk about these things. And uh, I mean, if anything, they're going to take big fights. Look at Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz is uh, he doesn't care about anything else but big fights. So, you know, sure. if, uh, if 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 Jose takes uh, takes that route, I wouldn't be mad at him. Like I said, he's done a lot for the sport. Quick point: I don't think he can take that route. So I don't. I, unfortunately, he's not the star of Nate Diaz, but he is obviously a much better fighter. He has a better, better legacy, but. Aside from that, Santiago, I want to get your thoughts on this topic because you are more of a casual fan than all of us. You, you probably have only seen maybe a few of all those fights, maybe two, maybe even one. Um, so what is your perspective of this guy from a casual a standpoint? And what's your perspective on this fight? Well, obviously, I've only ever seen and heard of one Jose Aldo fight, and that was his 13-second knockout loss to Conor McGregor. And... I had been doing some tape study about this to uh, prepare for this podcast, and looking at looking at Aldo's the way he conducts himself in the ring, the mentality that he carries himself, he's got he definitely embodies that Tony Montana up and coming, you know, mentality to his fighting. You know, he, he fights the way he wants to fight, gives two shits about how you know anything is done, and uh, he's a very strong and physical guy. And uh, I don't know if. Uh, I can't really say anything like whether the prime is gone or not because I haven't really seen too much of him. But I get a good sense that he's probably still going to show us and show me that what 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 we saw in the 13-second loss isn't everything that's all cracked up to be. Yeah, and I don't want to throw out the term fluke because that takes away from the counter shot that McGregor threw. Uh, but I just want to go through his resume really fast. That decade run that he had at featherweight – 
I'm going to skip some names, obviously, but Jonathan Brookins, Cub Swanson, Mike Brown, Uriah Faber, Manny Gambirian, Mark uh, Hominick, Kenny Florian, Chad Mendez, Frankie Yeager, Chan Sung Jung, Ricardo Lamas, Chad Mendez again, and then obviously the loss to Conor McGregor. That run is up there with the Fedor run, up there with the John Jones run that is still current, um, up there with the Anderson Silva run, up there with the George St. Pierre run. I mean, it's up there with those top five r- runs in MMA history. It, it's just it's so interesting how he's become one of those sports figures that is known for his greatest failure, not not his not his tremendous legacy, and that's very. I'm not gonna say disheartening or sad, um, but it's just, it's just disappointing. It's disappointing because we all here and everyone listening to the show can see Aldo and see that he is levels above a lot of people. That he is truly a great, and I I know a lot of people throw that term around, but he is that. He embodies that. Uh, the two wins against Frankie Edgar alone, the two wins against Chad Mendez alone, is just something otherworldly. That truly, there, there's no other. Buddy in the lower weight classes that has the run that he has. BJ Penn didn't have the run that he had. That's just a fact. Uh, that could be due to other factors, such as BJ Penn moving up to 197 pounds and fighting guys like Leo de Machida in Japan. But that's beside the point. You know, Dominic Cruz didn't have the run that o- Jose Aldo had. You know, Frank Yeager didn't have the run that Jose Aldo had. All these greats of the lower weight classes, uh, Takanori Gomi, uh, uh, Kawajiri, Chanel Aoki, Gilbert Melendez, all these guys don't have the run of Jose Aldo. He is, without a doubt, a Hall of Famer and a once in a lifetime talent. But unfortunately, he's known for his greatest loss. It's just sad. Um, do we think this fight or this pay per view card does any sort of big numbers? And by big numbers, I'm saying, does it do over 350,000 pay per view buys? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Damn. Co-host okay, Trump. all right. So, uh, obviously, when it comes to, like, talking about pay-per-view numbers, that's a particular avenue I am not that well-versed in. Uh, Santiago, um, the average UFC pay-per-view without the names Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey in the last four years does, on average... 250 350 so that's that is the range of the average i would say so does it do above average uh uh, average to above average i don't see why it wouldn't because from my understanding too this is a uh fight between a current champion and a interim champion am i correct in that understanding yeah but i mean okay you bring it up so i'm gonna address it really fast fuck the whole featherweight interim belt situation that's going on and i don't know i i think that we, when we got the whole conor mcgregor moving up situation we had jose Aldo become the interim champion against frank yeager then got promoted to the regular champion and then they had another interim fight with max holloway just bullshit i just want to address that very fast that that whole situation the ufc had was bullshit um but i say let's get to the fight let's break it down I think that Jose Aldo is one of the best boxers, the best Muay Thai practitioners in my history. He has some of the best takedown defense, uh, for one. He is incredible at pivoting and countering off the pivot. Uh, he basically is uh, the matador. Uh, when you look at like the Frank Yeager fight, for example, the second one in particular, he, he baited Frank Yeager in and was able to pivot and counter consistently over and over again. Uh, I think due to Max Holloway not really having the best... Um, defense for leg kicks we're gonna see jose aldo's leg kicks make a comeback that's gonna be intriguing how can max holloway deal with that that's an x factor that we really haven't seen because jose aldo probably has some of the best leg kicks in MMA history up there with guys like edson barboza and mirko kokop and prezo hizo so it's interesting how that's going to play a factor um but we have max holloway who's the taller guy who's the more ranger guy uh, I would say he has a little bit better boxer. He his, his clinch work is better. Uh, he's more brutal in the clinch. His, his elbows are, are fantastic. Um, his knees are fantastic. I, I I compare him to guys like Tony Ferguson, that new age sort of fighter that can do a lot, that are more freestyle and they flow. The flow is the best way to describe 
Max Holloway style, similar to guys like Tony Ferguson. They have a flow to them where they can go from offense and defense and from grappling to striking seamlessly, I would say, that there is no transition that it is very rough to read them. Um, and I think that's going to play an interesting factor. How is Jose Aldo going to deal with the taller guy, more ranger guy, who is on a different level in terms of flow at this point? Uh, Jose Aldo is very picture perfect in a way and, and, and almost textbook to where that could be a flaw where he is almost predictable, I would say. Well, uh, I mean, you, you, you've had a lot of time uh, as a Max Holloway to see Jose Aldo's style. I mean, a lot of those guys yeah, have the whole career of Jose Aldo. Exactly. Yeah. And, and those guys have been, you know, they've been watching. And listen, everybody looking at the top of the pyramid, the top of the mountain, they're always looking for the champs, uh, you know, footage. They're always looking at the champ fight because, you know, as a fighter, you're getting ready to be a champ. So you always you got the champ, even though if you're far in the rankings, you always got your eye up on the mountain. And um, but at the end of the day, that's right. At the end of the day, it's a fight, though. And, um, you know, you mentioned before, he is a ill as Muay Thai specialist, man. When it comes to those fucking soccer kicks, man, uh, he'll just take your leg right off. So Max Holloway, the best one twos, one of the best abs and right crosses. I agree. He uh, he's rangy. He he's uh, he has good length on his. uh, The only one that I see that. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say the only one. There's a couple of guys that are range at that. But him, yeah, he uses his range pretty good uh, when he uses that one, too. But um, I see him um, I see him using those leg kicks like you mentioned. I think those leg kicks are going to be big. They've always been big. Uh, I saw a stat. I, I forget what it was exactly, but it was roughly, and I'm paraphrasing, like the last nine opponents of – no, the last four opponents, sorry, of Max Holloway have landed combined – I believe it was like 57 leg kicks out of 70. Oh so that's God. a really high percentage. That's that's going to be something to look into. No, and it, <laughs> high percentage, that shit hurts, man. That takes, oh, a yeah. toll, takes a toll on your movement. Takes a toll on, 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 on I mean, even jumping in, you, you know, you wince when that, when that pain starts to hit you when those leg kicks start to accumulate. But um, you know, giving giving uh Max Holloway uh you know his credit, he's uh he's already seen that. I'm pretty sure they prepared in camp for kicks. Um, I think that Max Holloway coming into this fight, my opinion, is going to be the faster fighter. It's going to be the more quick, you know, a little more speedy, I guess. Uh, I give power to Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo, I believe, has a little more power than Max. Not that Max single shot power. Yeah, I agree. Sing, single shot power. Not that yeah. Max Max has pop on his shots too, but he's more of a combination puncher and very fast. He's accumulation. He's accumulation. He, yeah, he yeah. wants to overpower you and, and wear you down over time. Yeah, he could flow, like you say, he could flow right into uh, you know, into a submission. But uh, then again, you know, you're dealing with Jose Aldo, Brazilian black belt jiu jitsu practitioner. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see the fight. Um, I think that Max Holloway is gonna have to mix it up pretty good. Get get try to get Jose Aldo to a takedown to to maybe uh you know, some ground and pound into a a, a submission, but he has to he really has to put push the the pressure he can't let Aldo get into his zone man because I feel as a uh, if Aldo gets into his zone and you know his distance and range he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hurt him especially with those kicks I, I you know you bring up pace basically um that's gonna be very key in this fight who can set the pace it can Holloway set the pace and set the tempo of the fight uh and really just start overwhelming Aldo through time Holloway is one of those guys that he gets better as the fight goes on um, he's like an avalanche. It just, it slowly builds up and then it just, it just this unrelenting force in the later rounds. Um, that's what he has to do. He has to really push Jose Aldo, make him uncomfortable in every part of the fight in every section of the cage. Um, that's going to be key. I don't know if he does that though, because Frank Yeager won the best boxers as well in MMA, uh, won the best wrestlers in MMA, which is overall one of the better lightweight fighters of all time struggled. Could not take Aldo down. So I don't see Max Holloway being able to take Aldo down. I just don't. And this fight, to me, is going to end up as a striking battle. And that's very interesting because we cannot say one is a better striker. They're just very different types of strikers. Yeah, you're right. I mean, um, you mentioned before a single shot power. Like I said, you know, I was trying to describe uh, what Aldo had. But um, if I'm going to go for, for comparisons, Aldo definitely is the power guy. And Max is the speed guy. Uh, speed, speed, see, speed sometimes uh, kills power, man. You know, speed is power. So if uh, Jose Aldo 
it was a little rusty maybe or a little, you know, maybe the age is wearing on him. You never know, man. He, he might be get, he might be taking shots, uh, more shots than uh, what you think, man. I'm coming for you. That's I'm right. <laughs> That's what Max Holloway needs to do. Santiago, you said you've been doing tape study. I know you've been doing pretty hard, some hard work. And because you're casual, I love that. I love that a casual is doing some tape study on this fight. And plus, you're, you're a fan of striking. Both these guys are strikers. What's your take on the striking styles of both men and how it's going to play out in the cage? Well, when I look at a guy like Jose Aldo, I see a very refined street fighter. Uh, he has a very polished one-two and knee. Uh, he does let himself get caught in combinations during exchanges sometimes, but he is a very physically strong guy. You know, he... Uh, He's very resourceful too, you know, because even when he uh, seems to let, get get caught in those bad situations, like if maybe he gets taken down, he can still keep himself from being completely put on the ground, get back and come back to get the win. And in Max Holloway, I see a mid-range opportunist is what I would call him, a guy who can definitely fight at the distance, but will take his chances where he sees the opportunities are there. Like if he can get him get a grapple in. You know, get the choke in or get it to the ground. He will take it. He's not just gonna let it go. And it'll be interesting to see uh, which one of them takes advantage of their particular strengths. Because I do feel that in a striking battle, I think the edge, this edge is slightly in favor of Jose Aldo. So you're you're saying the edge is for Aldo? Interesting. I th I feel like Alex is leaning Max Holloway. So do we have dissenting views right now? Do we have? Alex going with the new breed, maybe the, the new face of the featherweight division, Hawaii's own, Max Holloway. And do we have Santiago going the legend, Jose Aldo? I mean, if you want to put it in those categories, yeah, I'm on the Holloway category, all right? You know why? Because this is the I'm new right. lion. Don't ask me if I'm all right. Hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. Nah. You're picking <laughs> Max Aldo, man. I'm hurt. I'm listen, hurt. hey, listen, listen, Aldo, listen. I'm being Aldo may be listening to the show. What are you doing? Hey, so what? Jose Aldo's gonna understand why I'm saying the things I'm saying. Jose oh. Aldo's gonna put a target on, on Alex's neck. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Jose Aldo's a fucking legend. He knows that what I'm saying is what's being said by others. Also, they're they're banking. A lot of people are saying that you ain't got it, Jose. That you you you're starting to slow down. I guarantee it. It's your job to prove us all wrong. That's all I'm saying. And and, and and like I said, I'm not saying that he's going to be, oh, miles behind Max Holloway. I'm just saying Max Holloway has a little edge, youth being one of them. And, you know, and Max Holloway hasn't taken too much punishment either. So it's not like I'm telling you that, you know, this is a young, beat-up guy that's going to be faster. This is a guy who hasn't taken too much punishment and is younger, and he's grown in, like you said, into his character, who he is now. He's a uh, he's not the same fighter as before. He's had Especially tough McGregor. You know, yeah, he didn't even address he, that. I don't know why we didn't address that. We total, totally flew McGregor over. McGregor beat him with a torn ACL, which was, in my present, legendary. Especially since what Max Holloway has done after that win. I mean, that isn't he. It's one of those fights, and at the moment, we really didn't think that much of it. Max Holloway was a young guy. I think he was like 19 at the time. Uh, he was sort of a nobody from Hawaii. Uh, people we. The UFC got him in because BJ Penn basically told the UFC, you know, bring him in because he's from Hawaii and, you know, BJ Penn's from Hawaii. Uh, and he was out wrestled by Conor McGregor for three rounds. And Conor McGregor had 20 ACL. And a lot of people wrote Max Holloway off. He bounced back, has a huge winning streak, has beat a bunch of contenders, a bunch of great names, a bunch of top fives, top tens in this division. Uh, okay, I'm going to make my official pick now. I'm also going Max Holloway. Uh oh, <laughs> he, uh, he jumped shit. Okay, okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna call you S double switch if, if Jose Aldo <laughs> just shows that he's a couple levels above Max Holloway. I will not be surprised, and I don't think any of us should be surprised if that's what transpires. Hey, let me ask you something, Matt. Uh, I mean, did you watch the uh, you know, the not the 24 7, but um. Yeah, the embedded vlog series. Uh, I, you know what? I have. I'm. Hey, listen. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't watched it either, but I'm gonna get into it. Uh, you know, soon today, and uh, I'm soon later on tonight after the show because I wonder what's going on in the camp. What are they working on? Right? You know, everybody that doesn't know, uh, UFC does have an embedded series where you can uh, see the uh, you know shots of the camp and what they're doing, what the fighters are going through, and whatnot. 
um, get a little behind the scenes of what goes on. But uh, it's very interesting series, and it, it, they always have it for these big fights, man. Um, you know what? I I have UFC on my phone, <laughs> so it's like every time they used to pop up, I used to see it, man. But I haven't been looking at it that much. I'm gonna have to put that notification bell to ring now because um, I forgot. Them things are kind of cool. Yes, I. I'm just. I'll put it this way: Max Holloway is gonna is gonna catch Aldo in between combinations. I think Santiago put it very perfectly. That was the point I wanted to get to, and Santiago addressed it. Um, so kudos to you, Santiago. Um, I think Jose Aldo also tends to not throw at the highest volume. Um, even when he has one fight, he doesn't throw at high volume. And with a guy like Max Holloway, you need to overpower him or you need to make him respect you. And so far, really no one has made Max Holloway respect them. No one has really shook Max Holloway. Max Holloway is the type of guy to, to stand in the middle cage point at the mat and say, let's go to Ricardo Lamas for the final 15 seconds of the fight that he was winning. He had no reason to do that and to risk getting knocked out. But he did that. That's the type of guy he is. That's the type of durability and toughness he has. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely he's definitely a dog in the fight. And he's he's taking some shots, man. I know you remember some of his fights. Yes. He's taking some good shots, and he's come right back from him. He's been rocked some couple times, but he's not, he, he's not that guy with the glass chin. He can take a shot and definitely come back. So, um... See if he can take one of Jose's <laughs> shots. <laughs> put this Contrary to what seems logical, actually, where Max Holloway is the type of guy to get better as the fight goes on, and therefore the idea is he should win decision because he'll be better in the third, fourth, and fifth round than Jose Aldo. Um, but I think that's wrong. I think if this fight goes to decision, Jose Aldo will win because he will have figured out Max Holloway. Uh, Max Holloway will be too tough. And we're going to see a, a classic Jose Aldo outpointing contest, similar to the Ricardo Lamas fight with Jose Aldo, similar to the second the Frankie Edgar fight, where he just shows he's better. He just does two or three things that he knows he can do over and over again because he can do those things so much better than his opponent. And his opponent has nothing to come back with. That's my only concern. But I think Max Holloway is going to finish him within three rounds. Um, I predict, Three rounds, huh? Yes, I predict Max Holloway getting him up against the cage and beating him up uh, for the first two rounds and a half. Now, now check it, right? Let me, let me, let me just go back because I, I said this earlier too. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about the fight. You know, I'm playing it in my head, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm talking about, yeah, Max got to get him down to the floor. You got to pin him. Now you're saying pin him up against the fence. Who's the stronger person as a grappler? Now we didn't, we're not talking about that. I think Jose is a stronger Jose grappler. Is more credential. That's obvious. Uh, Jose's takedown defense is better. But again, I'm not saying take him down. I'm saying rough him up against the fence, work the dirty boxing, work the elbow. Check it. Check it. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to go against what you're saying. I'm saying that to rectify what I said, too, because I'm saying Max should, maybe Max shouldn't fucking try to take him down. Maybe fucking Aldo. It'd be a waste. It'd be a waste of energy. So, yeah, you, you know what? Aldo's a, if Aldo, you know what? This is going to have to go into cardio, man. I think that this fight, if it, it's going to have to get finished in the later rounds, in the championship rounds, fourth and fifth, because if Aldo is a stronger grappler, uh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't see Holloway. I don't see, I don't see him winning a decision. I don't see him winning a decision, right? Do you? Yeah, I, I don't see him winning a decision at all. I, I, I see him just beating the older guy. I see Aldo looking his age. And, and to address the, the initial point we talked about at the beginning of the show, really, about the Aldo-Klitschko comparison, um, I think Aldo's going to take a really brutal loss in this fight, and we may see the end of Aldo. Um, and that may be unfortunate, but that's a distinct possibility. Um, Santiago, you've been sort of silent. You know, I know you were saying you think Aldo is the better striker, so are you picking Aldo? Are you the lone dissenting voice on the main event? Yes, I am going to be the lone dissenting voice because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, he he carries that Tony Montana mentality with him, not not just in the way he fights, but it seems the way he approaches his fights. And I do feel that, you know, for however long it goes, he's going to give it that Tony Montana finish at the end of the day. So it may be bloody, it may be brutal, but I do see him doing whatever he take whatever it takes to get that win. So you're going Aldo. We're going Max Holloway. We're gonna go on to so Santiago. Santiago, you 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 really you really think that um, he has the cardio? 
I think he has the resourcefulness to pull it off. I think that's what's going to be key for Jose Aldo to get the win against Max Holloway cuz like Matt mentioned earlier, he could get he could he could figure him out by the 3rd, 4th round and he could get the points win. So it's really to see who takes advantage of those middle to late rounds at the end at the end of the fight. All right. Well, who's yeah, man, who who who's up? Uh, Aldo's last fight was uh, um Frank Yeager. Uh Frank Yeager. So God, I'm trying to remember to see if I saw that fight, man. It was UFC 200. 200, right? I think I did see. I might have caught it. Oh, God, I love Brock Lesnar's comeback. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right. I think I think I did see that. That that was uh, Misha Tate losing to Amanda Nunez, I believe. Edgar 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 lost that fight bad. I'm not gonna say bad, but he was just he was just figured out. I mean, uh, that's like the easiest way to put it. Like it was a good fight, but. It, Aldo just figured him out. Same Frank, he fought the same Frank Yeager that we're seeing now? Yes, the one that just whooped Yair Rodriguez like a little schoolyard boy. Yes. Oh, man. Did you see that fight? Yeah. <laughs> that was bad. That was that was disheartening. But anyways, digressing to this card, because it is yeah. a prediction show. Uh, the co-main event. You know, uh, it's one of those fights. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Yes, hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> Girl, power. Girl power. Yeah, we got Claudia Goodella. Brazilian vixen herself. I don't know. That's not her nickname, but she's pretty dope. Uh, and Carolina Karakowicz, Kawakowicz. Yeah, I think the Kawakowicz. So many different pronunciations of her last name, unfortunately, that I don't know which one's true. You know, for a fact that it's nothing compared to those Brazilian pronunciations. Yeah, I always fuck those up too, and I feel bad because I'm Portuguese, so like I should get that shit down. You know, Alex, Mister Doomsday himself knows Portuguese, and I don't. I'm an embarrassment to all Portugal. I'm sorry. Fala português um pouquinho, menino. Yeah, fuck you too. So, anyways, <laughs> we have Claudia Gadella and Carolina Kawakowicz or Kawakewicz. Let me call it Carolina. Fuck it. And they're basically similar to the main event, sort of the leftovers of the champion in a sense. Uh, both women lost to uh, Joanna Dzerzhetic. You know, the beast of straw weight. In my opinion, the best female fighter right now, one of the top 10 pound for pound fighters in all of MMA. And you could very well make the argument she is the best women fighter in all of MMA history. You could definitely make that argument. I'm not I'm not gonna make that argument on this show. That's for a different show for a different time. But I'm saying that there's an argument for that. But anyways, digressing to this fight between these two uh beautiful ladies and just overall badass fighters. Um, I think this is very intriguing. I think Carolina gets a lot of hype and a lot of respect from media and fans uh, for a a really big punch that landed on Joanna that rocked her that made her look mortal. We haven't seen that for a while, so I think Carolina gets a lot of, a lot of hype for that. And obviously, beating Thug Rose Namajunas, who in my opinion is obviously one of the better fighters of strawweight division, um, and a relatively, in my opinion, sloppy fight. You know, half that fight was effective. I would say, yeah, I would say effective. I would say Carolina is a, is a type of uh, fighter to where she's almost like a Jorge Masvidal in a sense, or a Donald Cerrone for a time. Where and this is pre welterweight Donald Cerrone, more lightweight Donald Cerrone, where they're just so used to fighting that they do three things, and it works for them. Their defense is good, so they don't get hit a lot, and they think they're winning rounds, and all these rounds are pretty close. That's Carolina's issue, and I, I put that to us, you know, put that to the side for a second. Uh, Claudia Gadella is more of the bruiser. She's more of the woman to come out and bully you for the half, first half of the fight, and then tire her out, and you can maybe beat her in the second half of the fight. That to me is the intriguing part. Who's going to win in that exchange, or could Claudia Gadella get her out of there in the first round and a half? I don't think she can. I think Carolina is too tough for that. Um, so I think we are going to see a decision fight. And I think this is going to be a classic 29-28 scorecard, split decision. Um, we're going to have a pocket of the fans saying one person won. We're going to have a pocket of the fans saying this person won. And we're going to have a pocket of the fans saying, you know, fuck the judges and blah, blah, blah. We're going to get that type of fight with this, unfortunately. It's going to be a really good fight, really entertaining, uh, high pace, high technique. Claudia Goodell is the type of fighter to always make a fight exciting. Her grappling's uh, exceptional, I would say. Her wrestling and her jiu-jitsu. Uh, her boxing game is pretty good. Uh, her footwork has something to be desired, especially offensively in terms of cutting off the cage. 
boxing but i i think who i think carolina has is going to get is going to have the advantage in the uh, striking department I, well, obviously she does obviously she does but you can still beat a better striker by using by utilizing a really good game plan and sticking to it yeah well you know what she's the shorter fighter carolina push her up against the cage take her down elbow think- her I think Carolina Carolina is gonna uh, take the cake on this one. Really? Yeah, Carolina's gonna take the cake on this one. Uh, uh, you know, even as a grappler, she's she's pretty good. She's strong, but uh, I don't think it's gonna I don't I don't think it's gonna get to the floor too often. I think she's gonna be able to keep it on the on the on the on the stand up and uh, keep her at the end of her punches and kicks. Uh, I think it might be. Uh, this is a three round fight, uh, man. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Well. If it doesn't happen uh, early on, up second I round, I, five rounds, I would have gone with Carolina. Yeah, I was, I was 100%. actually, I was actually, me, I thought it was a five round fight, but three rounds, even so, man, I think the striking department, unless Gadella has a, a a plan to be able to, you know, pin her against the fence and really ground and pound or mash her up, I don't see her winning the the you know the stand up game with the reach advantage and all that other stuff. Well, I'm picking Claudia Gadella. I think she is going to do that. I think she is going to push up against the cage. Uh, y- you are going to, or she is going to, rough her up a bit. And even in the striking, she may get some success. I remember she did g- find some success against Joanna Jacek. Am I, yeah, am I wrong? She did catch her she, yeah, she did. Listen, that was a great fight. I think that was a great challenge for for jo- 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 Joanna. So, uh, you know, kudos to, to, to Claudia Gadella in that, you know, in that performance. But... I just see and look, Joanna's uh, one of the greatest strikers in UFC. I'm not saying just a woman, just in general, she's one of the greatest strikers I've seen. Her 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 reach and uh, the way she uses her her natural abilities to 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 really tear people the hell up. It's, she literally throwing them in the wood chipper, bro. The way she finishes them, bloodies them up. She's really got that killer instinct. But I would say that these two fighters definitely made Joanna look mortal. Both yeah, no, they, cha- they they both challenged the hell out of Joanna. Uh, but but gauging them from their performances against her, I think that Carolina is uh, is going to be victorious in this one. Definitely my prediction on um, on this on this fight. Just expect expect some Muay Thai from Carolina. Get up! Get the fuck up! <laughs> She's no, gonna no. elbow the hell out of her. Watch. Happen. It's not gonna happen. Santiago, thoughts and uh, predictions on this fight? Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, when I look at Claudia Gadella, I see someone who does her best work either when she has her opponent on the cage or on the ground. So I do feel that that's going to be key for her to get the win, especially in the three round fight. And. You know, Carolina, she is rarely ever stationary when she's on the attack. She's always coming forward with those combinations. She's a volume striker, you know, always, always trying to chip away at you, no matter how how heavy the punches may be that she's throwing. And I feel that if she can keep a consistent pace going for three rounds, she could edge out a decision. I definitely see a 29-28 in favor of Carolina. Man, I'm the I'm the sole dissenting voice going for Claudia Gadella. I feel I feel alone on an island <laughs> by myself. But it's okay. I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think we're all sort of in agreement that it's gonna go decision and it's gonna be very close. Um so it's gonna be intriguing. I think it's gonna be one of those fights where we're gonna complain about the judging, unfortunately. But digressing, because I think we should hope that it's gonna be a good fight. Vitor Belfort, Mr. TRT, Mr. Steroid himself. Versus Nate Marquardt, who himself has a you know stored history of steroid abuse and PED abuse. The battle of two guys past <laughs> the time, both guys close to retirement. Uh, Vitor Belfort, you know, has gone back and forth saying this is a retirement fight. This is not his retirement fight. So who knows with him? And both guys have history of PEDs. Both guys are chinny. Both guys can't last all three rounds. Man, I don't even know what to make of this fight. This is one of those fights where if you're betting. You stay away from this fight for the love of God. Because you because after three, Why? Why? Wait a minute. Why? You come on. After two and a half minutes, Vitor Belfort sucks. And all you have to do to beat Vitor Belfort is take him down at this point in his career. If you take him down, all you have to you can just transition the mount, because he'll let you. 
and you can just ground and pound him out. So you're wait a minute. What what, what are you talking about? It, man? The only way Vitor Belfort wins is if he knocks out Nate Marquardt, which is very highly possible because Nate. So, uh, so you're banking you're banking point. on you're banking on Nate Marquardt to go in and wrestle him. No, I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I didn't say I was picking Vitor Belfort. These are just the facts. No, I'm saying Marquardt. You're you're banking on Marquardt going ahead. I, no, I'm not saying I'm picking Marquardt yet. Okay. But all, but you know, and I know, and everyone that watches Vitor Belfort knows that after two and a half minutes, three minutes of the first round, he's done. Listen to me. He's no longer I'm, effective. Listen, but how many times has that happened to him? I mean, look. A lot. Ever, ever since the TRT era, he is lost. You want me to go through his resume? Well, you know what, though? But you gotta, his, hold on. Hold on. Let me pull up his match resume. Up, matchups are, look, the people he's been matching right now, this is, I think. No, this fuck is, those matchups. I don't care. I don't care. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that this matchup, to me, is even here. This is oh, it is. Even, I'm not saying it's not even. I hope this you know. is this is evenly matched up. I feel like uh, both of these fighters, you know, they have their time in the UFC. They're veterans. They've been, you know, through their, you know, ups and downs in their careers in the UFC, and uh, you know, they're trying to, you know, Vitor. He's sort of like um, he's trying to, I guess, still. Okay, hold on. Let me let me run through his yeah. resume really fast. Okay, after the yeah. Anderson Silva loss, which was the beginning of the TRT era. <laughs> he beat uh, Yoshihiro Yakiyama, remember Sexy Yama, uh -huh. Anthony Johnson, okay. lost to John Jones, beat Michael Bisping, beat Luke Rockhold, beat Dan Henderson. TRT era ends. Ends. He's no longer juice after that fight, right? All right, all right, all right. Loses to Chris Weidman by exactly what I said. He beat up Chris Weidman the first two minutes, then tired out, got taken down, and got beat up by full mount within one round. And then he beat Dan Henderson. Which is whatever, because Dan Henderson was way past his prime as well. And we have Jacare Souza and Gegard Musasi also knock him out. And then Kelvin Gaslin knocked him out, even though that was overturned by no contest due to Kelvin Gaslin smoking some weed. Fuck that. Um, so I, I don't know, man. I, I think that. Fuck this fight. I'm sorry. I don't care. I really don't care about this fight. I think that. Uh, Nate Marquardt, if he if he gets past the three minutes, will win. If he doesn't and gets knocked out within three minutes by Vitor Belfort, I'm not surprised. I'm going Nate Marquardt slightly because I think Vitor Belfort is that dilapidated. Washed up? You think? Yeah. You think Have you seen him? He looks like a 50 year old grandpa, dude. Like he looks yeah. bad. He's hey, just... listen, listen, man. He's he's a um. I think he's still he still got the uh. The explosiveness in the in those in that first round to, to maybe uh, take Nate out, man. I'm not gonna get the uh, see. This is the one where I'm not gonna give up on the um on the old line here because What's the old line, man. He does steroids, man. Who cares? Uh, listen, yeah, and then you know what? He did it, but he, is he doing it now? We don't know. It's in Brazil. Fuck. Well, you know what? That's a whole nother story. But what I'm saying is that he's being closely monitored. You know, he's already uh, apparently, you know, done it. So, you know, it's not like they're not going to be trying to, you know, test him or be aware of what he's doing. And um, but he's evenly matched with Nate. I think they're both, you know, within the the same, you know, physical. Uh, I don't know. You think Nate Merquat's, uh cardio and uh, physical abilities right now, natural abilities are, are way his chin is not, but I think his athleticism and cardio is still better than three minutes of the first my, round. My friend, let me tell you how. If, my, friend, my, friend. If, my friend, if Vitor Belfort catches Go ahead, no. quote, with one of those spinning back kicks or one of them crazy, crazy, <laughs> one of those crazy, you know, uh, uh, explosive uh, moves that he does, man, Nate Mercor is not going to survive it. He's a, uh, he's chinny. Give me a break. He's a little chinny, but um, like I said, Nate Marco could go ahead and try to wrestle him out, smother him, trying to get him tired. He better do it very. He better be protect his chin very early on because, I'm telling you, Vitor Belfort is going to come trying to knock him the hell out. Both barrels, guns loaded. Yes, with both barrels, guns loaded, Vitor Belfort is going to come out and then tire out, and then be gone. So. It's whatever. Santiago, thoughts on this fight? Please be, break the, the dissenting vote again. Wow, we've been dissenting on so many fights this card. Intriguing. Uh, well, now you and me are going to be on one side of this uh, of this spectrum because uh, 
when I do my tape study, I usually like to look at the last three fights that, that uh, a fighter's had. And uh, considering that Vitor Belfort's last three fights have been 0-2 with one no contest, you know, asterisk on that one, uh, I had to look back at his last three wins. And honestly, you know, he looked like a very calm, cool, collective fighter, you know. and But given how he looked, in his last fight against Kevin Gastelum, I don't, I don't see him being, you know, a, that guy who can get the good finish or has that impressive kicks again. It might be there, but I feel that right now this is probably Nate Marquette's win. You know, he's very physically strong. He's a good, good counter striker. Whether it's defending against the takedown or getting it in with those counter straight rights, and I feel that if he can get them in, he could, he could probably knock him out too. Uh, if I had to make a pick, I'd probably go second round counter knockout. For for Belfort or Marquardt, sorry. For Marquardt. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, fuck you, Doomy Doomsday. I know you're eating, but fuck you for picking the juice head. But they're both juice heads, so it doesn't matter. We're fucked anyways. God. This is what we comes to in, in the UFC in 2017. That the third fight from the top on a UFC pay per view is Vitor Belfort, Nate what Marquardt. Did Nate say? What did Nate say? Nate said, everybody. "Step to the mic. Step to the mic, Alex. What are you doing here? What did, Nate, what, what, did, what did Nate say? He said, everybody's juicing. <laughs> I ain't surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, and it's just, this fight could have happened a decade ago. Like, literally, the, both these guys' prime was about a decade ago. So, I mean, I I don't know. I'm just over it. I, that's why I just don't care about this fight. I think we're going to get a either a very weird finish or a very vicious finish in this fight, and that's something to look forward to. But God forbid that this fight goes three rounds in decision, because uh, that would be awful. Be awful. So, next fight on the card. And I will help you with this translation, my friend. Oh, you got me here? You got I, me? I got you on this one, my friend. Oh, you got it. Take it away. We are looking at Paulo Bojachinha from Brazil taking on Ulwali Bangbos. And my initial take on this is uh, Bohashinya can put the pressure on you. He has good form and technique, even if he is a bit wide with certain shots. He has good ground and pound and a strong right, but decent combinations at best. And in uh, Owale Van Bos, uh, he's pretty wild and orthodox in his rhythm and punching, but does have some decent technique, and he has a really strong kick. And... If I were to make my initial pick for this, uh, I'd have to go with Bohashinya because I feel that he's a little bit more technically sound, and this should be a knockout win for him, probably in the second or third round. Santiago, you just graduated from a casual to a hardcore by knowing either of those guys are watching either of their fights. But unfortunately, you're wrong in your assessment. Ali Wabamboze is going to win. You know why? Because he is a brutal knockout finisher. He is a destroyer of all worlds. He is a, a bringer of doom, just like Mr. Doomsday himself. Um, Have you seen his last three, hell, five fights, though? No. Right now, his, his last three fights, he's one and two. Yeah, that happens. But you know what? He's a, he's a destroyer of worlds, man. I don't care. I don't care. He's going to knock him out. Um, this is one of those fights where... It shouldn't be on the pay-per-view card of any UFC pay-per-view. Uh, so, unfortunately, we're getting it on a something that costs $60. So, the consumers, you can be a little bit upset about this, unfortunately. I would be, too. I think uh, there's another fight on this card we're going to get to on the Fox Sports 1 uh, portion of this event that definitely deserves pay-per-view exposure, pay-per-view relevance or title, or whatever it is. So... I'm going to go all the way from Bose. I think he's going to uh, knock him out. I, th I agree that he is not the best fighter, but if you look at some of the guys he's fought, uh, he's fought some really good competition. Uh, Uriah Hall, for example, is a very good fighter. He, he was at one point uh, positioned uh, to fight Anderson Silva, potentially you know jump over Anderson Silva, then get a towel shot uh, off of that. He did beat Gayard Musasi, for example. So he has beat some good fighters. Obviously, losing to that sort of guy isn't the the end all be all of your career it may show that you have a ceiling but i don't think uh paulo or, or you know as i might call him i don't think he is above that ceiling as of yet i don't think of that 
I think he is good, like you said. Uh, his technique is good, especially from a striking standpoint. I like it. I like his flow. Um, he throws some good straight shots, in my opinion. Uh, but again, I'm going all about Bambose. I think he's going to rush him. I think he's going to give Paulo some issues and probably take a knockout victory in the second round. Uh, Mr. Doomsday, are you, are you done eating? And do you want to make a pick on this fight, or do you want to skip this fight because you don't know who either of these guys are? Be totally honest with you, Matt. Um, you don't know who either of these guys are, huh? You know, you know it, man, and that's why I'm being a little quiet right now because, um, you know, I'm still um, kind of like a casual at the same time because some of the new up and coming fighters I haven't been up, you know, up to par with their with their careers. But um, I'd say just based off of, um, I guess the overall stat, you know, in comparison and record and height and all that other stuff. I'm making I'll make a, 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 an educated guess here. Um, I say, uh, Paolo. I think Paolo, I think There's Paolo. Old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, Fool me once. <laughs> Aim on. Aim on hey, listen, I'm picking, I'm doing a, 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 a you know, I'm miss, it fool again. I'm doing, a, I'm doing the any mini catch a tiger by the toe sort of thing. You got to understand, bro. I, I really, I'm really not. I, I got to win. I got to win this fight. I can't let you two beat me on this, unfortunately. But if I pick Paulo Borachincha or a Chinya and he wins, looks like you're in trouble, brother, because you called you know what? I, if, if that happens, If that happens, I will play this sound bite on the next show we do. Now, but, imagine had you played that when I was helping you do the UFC show. Which UFC show? The London UFC London. Remember when I got the first pick right? Yeah, fuck that, man. I've been off on picks this year. You know why? Because I don't do enough tape study because of TBV. But that's just, I'm going to put that to the side. does not matter. Because uh, I'm still going to win on this entire card. I'm going to get every pick right. Trust me. Uh, next fight on the card. I like this fight. I think it's very intriguing. Um, may not be the most highly ranked fight or the fight that has the most relevance to the division, but I think it's going to be very entertaining scrap for sure. Eric Silva, who was once a highly touted prospect. A lot of people thought he was a phenom and now he's going up against uh, Yancy Manderos, who is moving up a division to welterweight. I think that's very interesting, especially since I did not see him as a, uh, as a big lightweight. Um, so that's, that's just very intriguing to me on how he's going to do in a new division. I think we're going to see Eric Silva do some good work. I think Eric Silva, one, is just a little more used to this division. He's more experienced at this point. He's fought a lot of top guys. He's beat some good guys, lost to some better guys, unfortunately. And Yancy Medeiros is sort of at that level, too. I think this is a very even fight. Uh, both guys have some good striking. I think Eric Silva is a little more of the explosive striker uh, with a single. He, he can change the fight with a single strike more than Yancy Medeiros. Yancy Medeiros is more of a fundamental methodical boxer slash kickboxer, I would say, and of the American stint of kickboxing. I think both these guys don't have the greatest wrestling, though I think Eric Silva probably has some neater jujitsu. I would say. He, he can grab a submission off a dime faster than Yancy Medeiros, even though Yancy Medeiros trains with probably a better jujitsu team out of Caesar, uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu out of Stockton, California with the Diaz brothers, uh, Jake Shields, Gilbert Melendez, and such. That's just a phenomenal team. Uh, so he's getting some good work in. So I think they're going to probably cancel each other out on the ground game. If it goes to the ground or goes to grappling, it might end up being a boring fight. If it stays striking, I'm going to go with Eric Silva to win by knockout via the second round. Um, though it's, it's a close fight, and I don't have any issue with people picking uh, Menderos to win. Uh, Mr. Doomsday, thoughts and predictions on this fight? Well, uh, I'm going to have to go with my boy Eric Silva, bro, because... Um... I mean, Yancey's been in some good fights, too, but I think Eric Silva um, has been in uh, more battles, hard, real hard battles, man, and um, I think that his experience in the in those battles are going uh, to give him the win. I don't think he's going to be able to take him out. I think, uh, I think this might go all three rounds into a decision. That's possible. Um, however, if uh, Eric Silva manages to catch him in one of those, you know, one of those combination shots with some knees, and uh, I think that uh, Medeiros' chin won't hold up. I think Eric Silva's, uh, you know, he's got enough snap and pop in his shots to uh, to put him away if he catches him solid. Um, 
I haven't seen much, you know, I, I'm, 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 you know, again, I'm picking Eric Silva more also because I haven't seen enough of Yancey's fights. I don't know how good his grappling is. I thought that Eric Silva would definitely have the advantage on the, on the grappling. I would say he does. I would say Madero's couldn't um, negate the grappling. Mm. He may not be better than his grappling, but he, he could be good enough or competent enough to make that a non-factor in this fight. Well, it's going to be up who's a stronger fighter. Uh, I think Eric Silva's a stronger fighter. I'm going to pick Eric, Eric Silva. Um, to me, he's just he's going to be the stronger grappler. So unless... Uh, <laughs> you know, unless Yancey has uh, some spectacular knockout or or some, some 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 crazy submission that he that he you know snatched up in the fraction of a second, I don't see him winning this fight. I see it being a good fight, good battle. Uh, if there is a knockout or any finish, it'll be on Eric Silva's part. Santiago, take it away. Well. Uh... If I were to if I were to say who had the better ground game, I would have to go with Eric Silva because uh, he is, if I understand correctly, a six-time performance of the night winner when it came to submissions, and Yancey is probably the better stand-up fighter between the two. So I feel it'll depend on who can get the fight to where they want it to be. So if Eric can get the fight to the ground and get the submission, it's definitely all for Eric Silva. But if Yancey can keep it on the on standing, negate negate the uh, the ground game of Silva because he does he does have his own good ground game. It could definitely be a, a Yancey Madero's fight. Uh, my my official pick for this would probably be Eric Silva by submission. Wow, all three in agreement. First time on the show. Hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, all three agreement. That's what's up. And the crowd goes wild. First time on the show. Fuck agreement. We need we need more debate on this show. Anyways, we're going to get to the last real main fight we're going to all break down. Because uh, the rest of the undercard, in my opinion, is just a little bit lackluster, to say the least. So the Fox Sports 1 main event. Rafael Sunset versus the UFC debuting. Marlon Mahrais, or Mahrais, or however you say his last name in Portuguese. I mean, I'm I'm hyped on this fight. One off, we have two top five bantamweights of the world, arguably. Marlon Mahrais making his debut from the World Series of Fighting. Um, I think that's fantastic. I think he has probably the most potential to be somebody in his division, respective to the other imports from the World Series of Fighting. He is, without a doubt, a just high-level talent, both in Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu wrestling. He trains it with Frank Yeager, Edson Barbosa, and the Sarah Longo, Matt Sarah guys. Um, I think this could be a coming out party for him. Though the UFC, similar to how they, they matched Hector Lombard when he debuted in the UFC, and similar to how they matched Eddie Alvarez when he debuted in the UFC, they're matching him up hard with top five opposition. Rafael Sunsal is no joke. Un- you know, Unfortunately for this fight, neither guy is a big name, so there's really no talk about this fight there's no hype surrounding this fight but this is probably going to determine maybe another title contender for the winner of uh cody garbrandt tj dillashaw coming up into uh ufc 214 i believe because that was rescheduled recently so i'm very intrigued on this fight i think marlon marais is going to win i think he's the longer guy uh he's stronger better better uh striking i think he's going to eat him up with the leg kicks eat him up with jabs uh, I think he can negate all wrestling and all grappling by Rafael Sunsau. And Rafael Sunsau is no joke. Um, one of I'm, the most tell- I'm one telling one you. Of underrated fighters in all of UFC history, in my opinion. Okay. I was about to say, bro, I thought you were giving it all to uh, to Marlon. I don't even know who this kid is. He's coming in from what what league? World Series of Fighting. World Series of Fighting. Okay, that was on so- NBC for a time. So this is his debut. He has no stats, no rankings. He's making his debut in the UFC. Well, not his debut in the UFC, but he's making his UFC debut. Do you see the difference there? Is this no? I didn't. But is this his first fight in the UFC? Yes, this is his first fight in the UFC. Not his first fight. I know that <laughs> <laughs> he has no. But in the UFC rankings, you ask. 
<laughs> yes, he's not in the rankings, obviously, because he's not fought in the UFC. He hasn't fought in the UFC. Uh, so but he and listen, point blank is you know him, I don't, right? I'm going to have yeah. to go see what this kid's all about. But let me tell you something. I know who Rafael Sunsau is. I know I know who that is, and that's a dangerous fighter, bro. Uh, he's very compact, power, power puncher, good kicks. He'd give anybody great a good fight. Great wrestling. Great, great jujitsu, bro. He'll take he'll take a submission in this in a heartbeat. He'll only lose to the top three guys, and that's Cody Garbrandt, Dominic Cruz, and TJ Dillashaw. And that's nothing to you know scoff at. I mean, those three guys. I mean, he's are, number three in the division. He's he's, he's he, he shouldn't be though. Well, well, you know how the UFC is because wait, wait 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 he's ranked number three. He's ranked number three in the division. Number three in the bantamweight division. Uh, is that because they rank the champion as number one uh, as separate? What, what do you mean? Because there's three guys better than him. What's in the UFC rankings? Well, let me Get, find the UFC rankings and read them to me very fast. I'm very intrigued by that now. Um, but back to this fight, I think Hopkins Sunset can definitely get off his shots. Can definitely catch Marlon Marias coming in and exiting out. Um, if he can lay his hands on him and sort of, you know, get a trip takedown, go for single leg, he could find some interesting transitions. Um, though I just think Marlon Marais is just a little bit better, a little more in his prime, uh, and he is set to really become somebody in this division and become a player. Um, I think he is way more polished than a, a guy like a Thomas Almeida was when Thomas Almeida fought Cody Garbrandt and got knocked out. Uh, Marlon Marais is a better version of that. So that's just, it's just super intriguing to me. I don't, I don't know if he's going to be a UFC champion one day. I'm not going to go on a limb and say that, but he's definitely going to contend for a UFC championship one day. That's without doubt. Yeah, he's number four. He's number four. I'm sorry. Uh, they had, they had, uh, they didn't, they didn't update the e, um, the UFC app where I had read um, his ranking. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to put that in there. Are you picking uh, the show? Because you yeah, I'm, 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 no, I'm picking the sunset because I've seen him fight. I've seen his fights. I think he's a strong. I don't know the other guy, but. Uh, I mean, you'd have to be the top three in order for me to pick against him. You know what I'm saying? I know he's a bro. This guy is a, he's a bruiser. He's a bruiser, and when he smells blood, he goes for he goes for the kill. So, I'll be picking uh, Rafael Sunsau on this. If this is a three round fight, and this kid's coming into uh, UFC into the Lions Den in from another league, I think he's uh, being welcomed by uh, by quite the lion right now. So, I don't think it's gonna be a, a easy night for that kid. I don't know who he is. You know him, but uh. Rafael Asensio will finish him. I'm hurt, dog. Don't ask me if I'm all right. Hell no. Nah. Hell no, nah, man. You can't say that shit. I'm hurt, man. You can't. The hipster's choice, man. You're going to be proven wrong. Cannot wait. Santiago, please tell me you've done some tape study on Marlon Marias and you and you know about his potential greatness. Uh, unfortunately, I did limit my research to ah. the main card, but Based on hold on, hold on. That's for both of y'all. Yes, but based on the information that you have provided us, because you know, as our resident mixed martial arts expert, you are very knowledgeable in the information you give us. I will have to side with you on this one because it seems like he is basically prepared to get the win for this one, and he'll probably, you know get the same result Lara Croft did when she took down that bear in the video game. I'm coming for you. I'm coming. Marlon Marais is coming for Doomy Doomsday. I'm telling you. I'm going to call him up and be like, yo. Yo, I mean, just, just you're, you're, you're in the tri-state area, Marlon. Here's my boy's, you know, address. Listen to and me. Visit, you know, Brazilian style. You know what I mean? So this kid must have been doing some well, work. I got, I got the gun with the silencer that he's going to bring to you. Boom. I got one. I got one too. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> How about that one? Hey, listen. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, this kid's. He listen. He hasn't fought top level that competition. Is, that is true. Yes, you're right. Listen to me. They're they're bringing this kid in, and you're talking. Listen, I don't. I haven't seen. Him. I'm judging from a from from a blind eye. I haven't seen the guy fight, but you. I was just talking like this kid's doing some numbers in, in, in the other league. So is it was he getting his knockouts? Is he a champion coming in now as I'll put it this way? He Jose Aldo. Think of Jose Aldo. Uh -huh. And this is that guy. And, and so he was so he was the champion in the league? Yes, yes. Dominant bantamweight champion. Okay. So he's coming in the champion. He would get leg kick knockouts. Okay. So he's coming in the champion. Yes, yes. 
into the UFC, an ex champion of the WFC? WSOF. Oh, okay. World Series of Fighting, which has now been rebranded as something else that has the acronym of PFA, but I forget what it's actually rebranded as. Oh, okay. But he's coming in the champion. So, I mean, you're talking like, like, okay, so he's, he's, he might be a great fighter, you know, and you've seen him, you know, do his numbers, but against what type of competition, man? Anybody can be beat. Yeah, you're right. right. You're right. Anybody can be beat, and this guy could be beat. But, you know, your analysis is not the greatest. Because you suck. And it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's unfortunate. But it, it's all right. You know, you casuals over here. Uh, but but that, that's really going to be the last fight that we're going to talk about. There's some other fights on the card. Um, really nothing of note, unfortunately. Uh, but we're going to pretty much, I think, head out of here. I mean, it is it is a Friday night. You know, I know it's it's late over there on the East Coast for Mr. Doomy Doomsday. Uh <laughs> It's what's what midnight right now? No, it's eleven. Yeah, right? yeah it's eleven ten out here. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. It's uh, Friday. Yeah, on a Friday. But you know, it's it's a Friday night. You know, you want to go do something, watch a movie, whatever you want to do. Go get a drink, smoke some weed. I don't care. But go people, watch the Wonder Woman movie. Go watch the new Wonder Woman movie. I I'm I want to see that. I hear it's pretty good. I don't know my girl wants to see that. Shit. Oh, every girl wants to see it. Let's be honest. And that's okay. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a good date movie. That's, what, well. that's, what I'm that's gonna the do. only superhero movie you can ever bring your girl to and say, let's go, like, let's go on a date. And she'd be like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> she no? hyped up. The, 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 the only Marvel DC movie that they would, like, want to see. Just, like, yeah, only one ever. So kudos to them. Uh, can't wait to go see that. Addressing, because I know it was addressed in the chat. Somebody said it. Uh, are we doing a live play-by-play -play for tomorrow's event? No, we are not. Uh, I will be doing a training session for TVV Border Wars pretty much during the card. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm going to be watching it with the homeboys. I may do an immediate reaction show. Uh, depends when we can all get back to our house, back to our equipment and such and do it. Um, obviously, that's going to be very late for Mr. Doomsday at that at that particular point. So we don't know about that. Uh, I don't want to address it right now for an immediate reaction show, but we're definitely not doing a live play. play. I'm sorry about that. We will be back Monday for a sort of review show of this card uh, for sure. Do not have a time yet, but expect a time coming soon on Twitter at Mixed Combat News for any official announcement on it. And uh, obviously you can find me at Matt Hunter TBV uh, on Instagram at Mixed Combat News on Twitter. And you can obviously find Mixed Combat Radio on all platforms, YouTube, Facebook, SoundCloud, iTunes. Sound, I mean, I already said SoundCloud. What else have I not said? YouTube, or whatever. What it doesn't matter. But you can find us on any platform. Hit Ow. subscribe. Hit the share button. Comment. You know, do everything. Tell your friend. Tell a friend. You know, this is the movement. You know, this is the, the basically a TVV affiliate. We come here basically for free. We don't. Do, we have no money in this. This is for fun. We 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 talk about MMA and a little bit of boxing because we love this shit. Uh, Mr. Doomsday, bringer of doom, bringer of rain himself. Where can they find you? Well, man, you guys can catch me on IG at Alex underscore Doomsday underscore Linez, L-A-I-N-E-Z. And um, catch me on Twitter. I just got on Twitter, man. And, uh, you know, I'm still getting the hang of that stuff. I know I'm ancient right now. Uh, but you can catch me there on Alex Linez. That's L-A-I-N-E-Z T-B-V. Alex Linez T-B-V. And uh, Facebook, Alexander Linez. And uh, that's about it for the social medias for me, man. <laughs> Mr. Santiago, trainer of the year. Where can they find you? You can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash SANT731. I usually post fight updates for any boxing events that are taking place in the day. And obviously, for everyone out there, remember, hit that like button. Go to patreon.com forward slash mixed combat radio for as low as $1 a month. You can help put the lights on you know we do this i do this for my career this is this is it for me pretty, pretty much so you, you know help us we bring the content to you we want to bring more shows to you how do we do that you by going to patreon.com forward slash mix combat radio you know supporting supporting me supporting alex supporting santiago i want to pay these gentlemen for their time and only you guys can help me with that uh because you know youtube is not the greatest for ads but we're getting out of here have a good night have a good uh time tomorrow watching ufc 212 and Adonis Stevenson versus Andre Ferreira. We're out. Peace.